My name is Imani, I'm 16 years old, and I've been in foster care for one month, one week, and five days. My name is Daniel Bethea, I'm 18 years old, I've been in care since I was 10. My name is Nicole Hazler, and I was in foster care from the time I was nine until I was 17. I'm Imari Graham, I'm 16, and I've been in foster care for 42 days now. My name's Ayana, I'm 16, and I've been in foster care for 42 days. Growing up in the foster care system, I was constantly told I would never amount to anything. Like a plant, I could have allowed it to stunt my growth, but I had a choice. I can either flourish despite the odds or fall within the cracks of the system. The successes of the foster care system need to be told. In the words of the late Tupac Shakur, did you hear about the rose that grew from the crack in the concrete? Proving nature's law is wrong, it learned to walk without having feet. Funny, it seems, but by keeping its dreams, it learned to breathe fresh air. Long live the rose that grew from concrete when no one else ever cared. My name is James Williams. I'm 21 years old. I entered the foster care system at the age of one. I was taken away from my biological father. Me and my siblings entered into the foster care system. I was adopted at the age of five, me and my half-brother, and I stayed with them until the age of 12. They lost their parental rights. I went back into the foster care system until the age of 19. During my stay in foster care, I lived in many foster homes, many different group homes, experienced abuse and neglect while my stay in care. Entering the foster care system, I was eight. Uh, my parents passed away in a house fire. Both my parents passed away. Uh, I lived with an uncle for a while with all of my two siblings, my older brother and older sister. After a while, my uncle wasn't able to take care of us, so my brother went to live with my aunt, and me and my sister went to live in a foster home. While I went through the foster care system, my older brother and I both went through it at the same time. Just really wish that I had had a really good, solid example of what family was supposed to be. And I wish I had a strong example of, of what somebody who's leading a positive life was supposed to be. The most impactful person for me was Ty. If it, for him, for him, for his being, um, he influenced me to do a lot better um, because he did. Uh, nothing really shaded him, nothing ever really got to him, and he remains fo focused and uh, steady in his grind and his hard work. Um, and he never faltered, he never faltered. I have to say the influential person for me was my caseworker, Kenya Papillon. She took me seriously in my claims whenever I had issues at my different placements. I remember one time, uh, one of my placements, foster parents was hitting me, you know, after an argument and cops were called, I was put in jail and I just remember sitting with Kenya in a Bilo grocery store parking lot and, you know, just talking about life, talking about where I wanted to go and what I wanted my future to be like. And, and I never really had that conversation with anyone until that point. Anyone who really genuinely cared to hear me out, to actually genuinely wanted to know me as a person. I former foster mom, the, the last one I lived with. She, um, she really inspired me. She was always pushing me, telling me to go to school, um, move on, like not let, not drag the past with me all the time and uh, always be resilient of things. He was, he was very resilient and that's something that I guess I adapted um, being around him. Um, so I just applied the trait. I applied the trait of resiliency. Resiliency, uh, how exactly did that help you? It's a mindset. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a mindset that, that goes into effect, um, that nobody's here to do the work for you. These are your circumstances. 
this is your situation, but how can you change it? Is what led me to my success, that it was only everybody that up until that point that supposedly had love and care for me all turned their back on me at that, at that given moment of being inducted into the foster care system. So therefore, I was all alone and therefore it was on me. Sometimes that's just the way it is in foster care. You're probably gonna not have the best foster home. You're probably not gonna be at the best group home. You're probably not gonna have the best caseworker. So what are you gonna do from there? And it comes down to the fact, what is your future? What do you want? What do you want in life? And how are you going to get that? To be successful, I want to look back like in 20 years and know that I was here and then manage to become like exactly what I wanted to be. Going to college is important to me because no one in my family actually went to college. I'd be the first to attend and actually try to attempt graduating from college and just to make my family happy and most importantly make myself happy. For me, completing um, a PhD program in physical therapy, that, that for me is my idea of success after um, going through what I went through. The outcome is far more greater than what you are going through. So for me, the outcome, the outcome was success. If it wasn't for me being resilient, I could have fought her and I could have stopped fighting a long time ago and I could have ended up God knows where. So that's when I decided to look into culinary school and start getting my life together, getting my GED, going to college, getting a job. The most important thing I would tell a new person coming into foster care is to accept change and be willing to understand that it's not to hurt you, it's supposed to help you and make you a better person. To have like an independence about yourself and be strong and confident in who you are, because when you're around a lot of different people and like you come around new people, you kind of almost lose yourself. But you have to like know like this is who I am and stick to like your morals and your values. When, when my parents passed away, someone was trying to give me advice and I would tell them, how do you know how I feel if your parents haven't passed away yet? It's like, once you've gone through the same pain I've gone through, you can come and try to explain everything to me. And if I try to give somebody advice, I'll tell them I can sort of relate and I can try to help. Entering care was the most traumatic situation the most traumatic experience of my life. I've never been so scared in my life in the moment of uncertainties. Sitting in a room, going through a phone book of family members I'm trying to reach out to. With my brother writing a letter to my father that was incarcerated at the time, not knowing where we were gonna end up. We're in a box room, not knowing, scared. It may result that or it may result good. We didn't know. We didn't know. However, once in it, once realizing that we didn't have anybody, we relied on ourselves. We trusted and had faith in ourselves to change the outcome. And that's what I would tell somebody entering the foster care system as of now, to trust yourself, believe in yourself, have hope for yourself. If, if you go into foster care, you know, it's, it's traumatic. It's, you know, for a lot of people, it's, it's, you know, either traumatic or it could be the best days of their lives. You know, it's, it's so different in regards to the different cases, but it's, it's what you do with it. You know, if you're coming in from a bad situation or if you're coming in and you don't want to be there, I mean, how many days are you just going to cry? until you decide to move on from the situation and, and actually do something with your life, meaningful with your life, to actually inspire yourself and motivate yourself because you can't rely on anyone else. What advice would you give to the foster youth who are exiting the foster care system? My advice would be just keep your eye on your goal and forget about your past as done with, just keep on going 
towards your goal because you're gonna get there. And once you get there, you're gonna be happy, you're gonna feel success, and you're gonna be able to say, I finally did something that I've always wanted to do. Run, run towards what you want to accomplish. Run, run boldly um, in pursuit. Be, be relentless in your pursuit with, with the passion that's in your heart to achieve whatever it is that you want to accomplish. You control the outcome. Now, upon your exit, it's on you. It, it always has been on you. I realized I was privileged in foster care because I've received so many services. So many things were pushed my way. I was eloquent, I could advocate, and I was a good story. And I realized that there's so many youth that fall on a wayside. At the end of the day, there are many foster youth that are not being served. At the end of the day, these foster youth are realizing that they don't have anyone that even the own system that's supposed to be helping them out drop the ball as well. And they have to rely on themselves. They have to rely on the resiliency. They have to understand that I can't be a victim anymore. I have to be a victor.